Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Pensions the Basics in Sage 50 Payroll. My name is Alice and I'm your host and presenter for the session. I am also joined by my colleague Duncan, who's in the background, ready and waiting to answer your questions throughout. And a little look at what we're going to cover in today's session. So, of course, I'll start with an introduction, a bit of an introduction to what automatic enrolment is and your ongoing duties as an employer. We'll then look at how you're going to set up your pension scheme and the various settings that you need to check. How to assess your employees and assign the scheme to them. And this will include the different kind of descriptions of the worker types as well. And then lastly, how to check that the contributions are calculating. And if you need to amend them for any reason, how you can do this for the employees. So under the Pensions Act 2008, every employer in the UK must put certain employees into a workplace pension scheme and contribute towards it. And this is called automatic enrolment. If you employ at least one person, you are an employer and you do have certain legal duties that begin on the day that your first employee started working for you. And this is called your duty start date. So I would like to begin with a bit of an explanation of the four steps of automatic enrolment. Firstly, you're going to choose a pension scheme and get this set up with your chosen pension provider. You and your employees will pay money into this scheme and ultimately it's going to help your staff pay for their retirement. Now, there are loads of options out there in terms of which pension provider to go with and what type of pension scheme to set up for them as well. So that is totally up to you. Next step is going to be working out who to put into the pension scheme or assessing your employees. And you'll need to assess the employee's age and wage to determine their worker category or worker type and whether or not they're going to be eligible for automatic enrolment. You also need to write to your staff as well. So this must be done within six weeks of your duty start date. And you're going to write to them to explain how automatic enrolment applies to them. This is often called pension correspondence. So you can do this by sending the pension correspondence letters to your employees. And a fourth step there is to declare your compliance. So you've got five months after your duty start date to do this. And it's basically declaring that your workplace pension is compliant and all of the information that you've provided is accurate. And if you would like any more detail or advice on these four steps, I have linked an article at the bottom of this slide, which will take you to the pensions regulator website. Now, once you've completed these four steps, your duties don't end there. As an employer, you do still have ongoing duties. These are to assess your employees. So you need to assess their age and wage each time you pay them, see if there's been any changes and if they need to be put into the pension scheme. You can either do this manually or via the pension assessment, and that'll be for the pensions module users out there. Every three years, you also need to carry out re-enrolment duties, such as re-enrolling any employees who've left your scheme. You need to continue paying into your pension scheme as well. And this also includes checking that you're paying at least the minimum contribution levels, which is currently 3% employer minimum and 8% total minimums. So that could be like 5%, 3%, um, as long as combined it is 8% total and employer at least 3 and you need to manage requests as well to join or leave the scheme and keep records of this as well. So an employee could write to you as the employer and ask to join the scheme. You must action this within a month of receiving the request. And in terms of leaving or opting out of the scheme, um, the employee will in most cases need to request this through the pension provider and you'll then need to opt them out in payroll um, or kind of leave the scheme in payroll and then provide a refund of the contributions if necessary as well. Again, more information on these duties by following that link at the bottom of the slide. Now, in terms of setting up the pension scheme, it is nice and easy to do this in payroll as long as you've got the information that you'll need um, as all of these settings are going to determine how the pension contributions are calculated. So firstly, you need to know what type of scheme do you operate? Is that a GPP, stakeholder, master trust? 
you need to know, is it a qualifying scheme for automatic enrolment? And does it use qualifying earnings for pensionable pay as well? And if it doesn't, what pay elements are going to be pensionable? Is it a salary sacrifice scheme? What are the contributions as well? So is that a fixed amount or a percentage and how much of each? And are the employee contributions deducted before or after tax as well? Because that will affect how we calculate. And lastly as well, what is your provider reference? That is a bit more information that you'll have to put in when you're setting up the scheme. Now, if you are unsure about any of these, you're not exactly sure what the settings should be or how to set it up, um, your pension provider will be able to give this information to you. So do double check this, make sure they've got, you've got the correct information um, so payroll can calculate things correctly using the pension scheme. Now, in payroll itself, in terms of actually setting up the scheme, I do have some screenshots here before we go into the demonstration. So you'll go to your company tasks and you've got a section there called pension schemes. And in here, it kind of includes some like default pension schemes that payroll already has. You can rename these, you can edit them as well. So the settings and contributions can match your pension scheme. Or you've got the option to create a new one as well. We will take a look at these settings soon too. And then once you have set up the scheme, you also need to set up your pay elements for pension contributions to determine whether they're going to be included or excluded from your pension scheme calculations. And if the payment counts towards qualifying earnings, you'll see you've got a tick box in the middle of the screen called qualifying earnings. You'll just need to tick that. And payments that count towards qualifying earnings, these are going to be things like salary, commission, bonuses, statutory payments as well um, and a few more examples there on the right hand side but other than this if the payment should be used to calculate pension contributions there are some other pension tick boxes there in the settings so you've got pension main pension avc so this is an additional voluntary contribution made by the employee and you also have a salary sacrifice box for pensions too. So if you've got a salary sacrifice pension scheme and you want to use this particular payment for the salary sacrifice contribution, just make sure that you've ticked that there. So you would need to edit and repeat these steps um, just to check each pay element and make sure it's subject to the right things using these tick boxes. And then payroll is going to use these pay element settings along with the pension scheme settings to work out the contributions. But without further ado, let's dive into a demo and I'm going to show you the pension scheme settings and the pay element settings as well. So I'm logged into my company here, just a small one for today's example. I've got five employees and they're all monthly. But let's actually just go straight to the pension schemes. So I can find that by going to my company tasks. And you'll see pension schemes, just second option there from the tasks. Do so have some default schemes as I showed on the slides there, just kind of generic ones that are already there. But as you can see, I have already set up my two pension schemes. I've got Nest Pension and my Salary Sacrifice Pension Scheme too. At the bottom too, um, you can leave this blank like me, but you do have the option of adding an enrolment review date. So this would be the next date that you need to review your pension schemes for automatic enrolment. But for now, I'm just going to select my Nest Pension and I'm going to click on Edit. If it's assigned to anyone, you will get this message. Just a reminder, really, um, that it's in use by a few employees. So I'll click OK. And these are the pension scheme settings. So I've got four tabs along the top. Details. I've got employee, employer and provider. We'll start with details and we'll kind of go through what all of this means. So first of all, you've got a reference number and this is given to the scheme by payroll. As you can see, it is greyed out. You aren't able to change that. You can, however, add a description. So kind of name of your pension scheme. I've just called my Nest Pension, so I know exactly what scheme this is. Next, we've got this drop down and this is where you can select the type of scheme that you're using. There are some which are going to apply the kind of relevant settings to that scheme automatically. 
Um, but if you can't see your scheme type in here, there is also the option of other. That's just what I select. Um, that means that you can select the specific settings that you need manually. You do have the next kind of few types of schemes here, and these aren't used anymore, so we'll just ignore these for now. But you've got things like GPP, so your group personal pension, or PPP, your personal pension plan, and some others like stakeholder and master trust. But I am just going to select other and kind of go through the rest of the settings with you. Next setting you've got here is a SCON or a scheme contracted out number. Now these are no longer relevant since the contracted out schemes have been abolished so you can just leave that blank. And then underneath here you do have some tick boxes so these relate to the automatic enrollment schemes. We've got qualifying scheme and if you are unsure you can just click this little question mark and uses qualifying earnings for pensionable pay. So qualifying scheme, this should be ticked to indicate that your pension scheme is a qualifying scheme. And this just means that it hits the minimum requirements set by the pensions regulator for use with the automatic enrolment workplace pension schemes. And the next tick box is for schemes that use qualifying earnings for pensionable pay. And this applies to more recent schemes since the introduction of automatic enrolment. Now, on the presentation, I gave a list of payments that should be included in qualifying earnings, but essentially it's any payment subject to tax or national insurance. So that's things like your salary, commission, bonuses. With this as well, uh, pension contributions will be calculated on earnings between an upper and lower threshold, which you can find in your company legislation. But for a monthly employee, for example, the lower threshold is a £520, and the upper threshold is 4,189. So for a scheme that uses qualifying earnings for pensionable pay, the contributions are going to be calculated on the earnings between those thresholds. But of course, you can find that um, in the company legislation, which is just this fifth or sixth option down on the left. The other main setting in here is this last tick box at the bottom. And this just is for if you've got a salary sacrifice pension scheme, you just want to make sure that you've ticked this box. The contributions will work slightly differently for this type of scheme. Um, it's not a direct employee contribution. Um, it's a salary sacrifice amount instead. But I will be showing you my salary sacrifice scheme that I've set up, along with where to check these contributions a little bit later. But that is the details tab. Let's move on to the employee tab as well. At the top here, you've got the option to choose from the drop down whether the contribution is a percentage or a fixed amount. And you can specify just in the box next to it the amount. So I've just set mine to 5%. So this is 5% of the employee's qualifying earnings. On the right as well, something I'd like to point out are the include statutory payments tick boxes. And um, we can see these are automatically selected and grayed out. So they are automatically selected because we've already stated that the scheme, the scheme uses the qualifying earnings in the details tab. So that's automatically selected for us because of that setting. And the last important setting in here is the deduct before tax tick box. So this relates to the tax relief arrangement and you'll just need to make sure that you've set up your scheme to either deduct before tax if your scheme uses something known as a net pay tax relief arrangement or after tax which would mean that the tick box would be unticked like mine and is known as a relief at source arrangement. But the way that that works is that you would deduct the pension after tax but then you would reduce the contribution by 20%, which is the basic rate of tax. And that's then claimed back by the pension provider directly from HMRC. But payroll does that calculation for you, um, depending on this setting. And if you do want to know a bit more detail about the thresholds and kind of details of how pension contributions are actually calculated, um, we have got an upcoming webinar on pension calculations. And our first session is tomorrow for that one. But let's move on to the employer tab as well. Um, same option in the top left, either percentage or fixed amount. Mine's just set to 3%. So combined, I've got the employee is 5%, 
employer is three, and I've met that minimum requirement of 8%. And that's kind of all you really need to worry about in here. And lastly, the provider tab as well. So this is just where you can enter your provider details, um, such as the name. So I could just pop in um, a nest pension again, address, anything like that. And you do also need to pop in your provider's reference there at the bottom. Any further details that you wish as well. But that is my scheme set up and a little bit more information on the settings as well. So just a bit of a recap on those most important settings. If we go back to the details tab, the users qualifying earnings for pensionable pay. Very important tick box there. And the deduct before tax tick box as well. Just triple check those. Uh, make sure they're selected correctly. But again, if you are unsure, check with your pension provider. And while we're in here as well, I'll just quickly show you the differences with my salary sacrifice scheme. Again, I'll click edit on this one. You can set up mul multiple schemes and then assign them to the relevant employees. But we can see I've got the same settings options in here. Difference with this window, though, is that I've actually got the salary sacrifice scheme tick box ticked. And one thing that does remove for me is the deduct before tax tick box. So that is not a relevant setting for a salary sacrifice pension scheme. So payroll's known to remove that and kind of apply any relevant settings because of this tick box. And the same applies with the qualifying scheme and users qualifying earnings. A tick these if applicable, which they most likely will be. And same again, I've still got the 5% for the employee and 3% for the employer. But they were the pension scheme settings. And other than this, it is important that you check your pay element settings. So we'll go and take a look at those now. I'll close out of this. And still on the left hand side in your company tasks, two options below, we've got pay elements. So remember, you do need to check that these are set up correctly. Um, and so certain pay elements um, should be or shouldn't be included in your pension calculations. Um, and you just need to make sure that you've set them up correctly. I'm going to start with um, basic pay. So I've got four set up in here. We'll start with this one and just click edit at the bottom. And hopefully you'll recognize this from the slides, but we've got a section in the middle here to say what this payment is subject to. We can see qualifying earnings is ticked for the basic pay. So pretty much all payments subject to tax and national insurance uh, should have this ticked. We've then got pension main and pension AVC ticked. So we do want this basic pay um, element pensionable for the main contribution and any additional voluntary contributions as well. And just on the left, I also need this pay element to be included in salary sacrifice pensions. So I'll tick this and this means this pay element is now fully pensionable and it's going to be part of the qualifying earnings. And I'll just click OK to kind of save that. Next pay element I'm going to check is expenses. So I'll click edit. With this one, I just want to make sure that it's got none of these tick boxes ticked. So it does not count towards qualifying earnings and it's not going to be included in any type of calculations for the pension contributions either. It's also not subject to tax and national insurance. So that is looking pretty, pretty blank in the middle there, but that's exactly what we need. Commission next. Again, I'll click edit. Now this is going to be subject to be included towards the qualifying earnings for the employees. So I'll make sure that's ticked. However, my uh, specific pension scheme only requires the basic pay to be included for the contributions. So I'm going to leave the rest of these pension tick boxes unticked. Make sure they're clear. And it's a similar story for overtime as well. Select that and click edit is going to be included in the qualifying earnings, but not towards the pension calculation. So that's going to leave those unticked as well. And that's them checked. I'm going to click OK from here. Now, a little top tip from us as well. If you do have a lot of pay elements, uh, there is a report that I would like to show you, which might help you just kind of check them a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to go to the reports, the post update reports above the employee list. 
and I've got it favorited, but it is just in the company section and it's the payment types report. So we'll just preview this and show you what it looks like. But this is going to show you all of the pay elements that you've got set up in the company. Might just help you to kind of more effectively check which ones are subject to pension and qualifying earnings and things. And um, you can see yes indicates it's ticked, no indicates it's not. Um, and it just kind of lets you be able to check and see if you do need to change any of the settings um, and kind of make any of them pensionable. So that is the payment types report. And back to the slides, a little bit of a recap on that one before we move on to the next section. So you are going to set up your pension scheme according to the information that you've got from your pension provider. You're also going to check the pay elements as well, just to kind of check and determine whether they're going to be included in the qualifying earnings or not, or towards your pension calculations. And the next section is going to be all about assessing your employees and assigning your As part of your ongoing duties, you must assess your employees each time you pay them. And you can do this either manually, which we'll be going through today, or if you are a pensions module user, you can do that via the pension assessment. Uh, we do have a separate webinar going over all things pension assessment if you do want a little bit more information on that. But you're going to assess your employees um, to determine which worker category they fall into or worker type. And these categories are eligible non-eligible or entitled. So eligible employees, this is the worker category who must be automatically enrolled into your pension scheme. And before we move on, just a little bit more information about these worker types. So starting from the left, we've got entitled. This is for employees aged 16 to 74, working in the UK, earning below £6,240. And these employees have a right to join your pension scheme if they wish. And if they do join that scheme, um, employers have the choice whether to contribute so they don't have to. Next, we've got eligible. This is for employees aged 22 to state pension age, working in the UK, earning above £10,000. These employees are the ones who need to be automatically enrolled into the scheme. So even if they don't want to be part of your pension scheme, you must still carry out your automatic enrolment duties and then the employees will have the option to opt out if they wish. And lastly, we've got non-eligible employees. These are people aged 16 to 21 or state pension age to 74, working in the UK earning above £10,000 or it's going to be employees aged 16 to 74, working in the UK, earning between £6,240 and £10,000. And these employees have a right to opt into the scheme. And a slightly different, obviously entitled workers, if they join the scheme, the employer can choose to contribute. Whereas if a non-eligible employee opted into the scheme, the employer would have to contribute. So a slight difference between those two there. But whether you assess the employees manually or via the pension assessment, three things are going to be checked to determine what worker type they fall into. And that's going to be the age, the UK worker status and their wage. So to manually assess the employees, starting with age, you're going to check your process date and open up the employee record. And the employee's age is on the right hand side of the personal tab underneath the date of birth. So you just need to make a note of what that is. UK worker status as well, um, still in the employee's record, but this time on the employment tab, you're just going to check whether that non-UK worker box is selected or cleared. And as for the wage, again, check your process date, but this time you're going to go to enter payments. And in the information tab, you do have a pensions folder on the left where you can see what the qualifying earnings this period is um, or are for the employee. So nice quick checks to do that. Um, but yeah, that's how you'll kind of assess your employees each period. A pension scheme can then be assigned manually in the employee's record. 
or automatically via the pension assessment for those of you who are pensions module users. If you are a pensions module user, very important to not assign the pension scheme manually in the record. It is important to let the pension assessment do all of that for you. But for those of you who will be doing it manually, you don't have the pensions module, let's just dive straight back into a demo and I'll show you how you can assign those pension schemes manually. Now, for the sake of this webinar, I have already assigned a scheme to a few of my employees, um, but let's just take a look at where I would do this. So employee number one and two, they're already in a scheme. But I'm going to open up the record. And for employee number one, I'm going to go to the pensions tab. And I'm just going to click on manage schemes. Now, as I said, I do already have one in here for them, but if you wanted to add a new one, all you would need to do is click add. Using this drop down here, you'll just select the scheme. So let's say I wanted to add the salary sacrifice pension scheme to them. You're going to add a joint scheme date, which is already set correctly for me, but you can edit that if you need to. And you would just double check the contributions as well. But we'll come back to this a little bit later. So I'm not actually going to add it, but just to show you again, on my next employee, that's going to be the pensions tab, manage schemes and add. You'll just select that from the drop down, double check your joint scheme date and check the contributions as well. You do also have a little tick box at the bottom. Um, just to kind of confirm whether this is going to be the primary scheme for the employee. Now, if you're introducing a new pension scheme or you've just got a lot of people to add in general, so if you've got a quite a big payroll, you don't have to individually do it in the record. So you are able to use something called a global change to add it to multiple or all employees at once. And I'll just show you where that is now. So I'm just going to swap my selection. Um, let's say I was adding my salary sacrifice pension scheme to these remaining three employees. They currently don't have a pension scheme assigned to them. So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to go to tasks, down to global changes, down to pensions, and then add pension scheme. You can do the same if you need to remove a pension scheme from employees as well. And before today, we'll click add. Just a case of selecting the pension scheme from the drop down. So we'll add them to the salary sacrifice scheme. It is going to be the primary scheme, so I'll tick that box and I'll just click OK. Confirmation that we've selected three employees. We do want to proceed and we can see it's successfully updated those three employees there. So the changes have been made. And let's just double check in their records. If I go to pensions, yeah, I can see that salary sacrifice scheme. for all three of them there. So that's an option to add it to multiple employees, just saves you from having to do it individually. Um, and yeah, we've looked at the records there and we can see that that's now been added. So that was how to assign a pension scheme, either individually in the record by clicking on manage schemes and add, or you can add it to multiple employees at once using a global change. And again, you can do that to remove a scheme or kind of leave, make an employee leave a scheme as well. Just a reminder, you can find all of this information that I've put on the slides if you download the handout, um, just using that piece of paper icon um, that you've got on the webinar control panel. But that does bring us on to the last section of the webinar, which is going to be checking those pension contributions and how to amend them if necessary as well. So I do have two pension schemes, as you've seen, and the way that you're going to view the employee and employer contributions are slightly different for each of these. So I'm going to show you both of them, um, but you will see both of them in enter payments. And now I did touch on this before, um, but you also have the option of amending an employee's pension contribution. 
So even if there are other employees on the same scheme, you can go into the employee's record and you can amend their individual contribution if needs be. So let's go full screen again. I'll bring payroll back up and we'll go and check those contributions. So I'm going to select all of my employees here and I'm going to go into enter payments. So my process date is set to the end of this month, which is my next pay date. And from the payroll tasks, I'll just click on enter payments. So I've got the payments as normal. Uh, remember, we did specify whether we wanted these to be included or excluded from the qualifying earnings and the pension calculations. Then if I just go along to this summary tab, got your payments on the left as normal and deductions on the right too. And I've got the employee contribution just here. So this is the employee's contribution. If I then click on the employer's box at the bottom, we can see this is the employer contributions. And that's for my employee on the Nest Pension Scheme. So I can see that's calculating all OK. And I'm just going to go along as well. We've got this one. These aren't showing any contributions just yet. Their enrolment date was set in the future. So that's showing a zero. But if I just go back to employee number two, um, I did recently change this to the Nest Pension Scheme. And just to let you know, if you were going to have a salary sacrifice pension scheme for an employee, you wouldn't actually see an amount in the employer, sorry, the employee contributions. So for any employees who are on a salary sacrifice scheme, this box here would actually show a zero. And what you would find instead is in the employer's box, you'd have a total kind of contribution in here which is be, going to be the employee and employer combined. So that can sometimes catch people out. It is totally normal, um, but that's because it's going to be combined in the employer's box. So that would be a much higher figure than normal. But let me just go back to employee number one. And a little top tip from me, if you do need to quickly get to the employee's record, you can just qu uh, click this employee icon in the top left. Take like a little shortcut there. And I just want to check something else in the record. So I'm going to go to pensions and manage schemes. And I'm just going to click edit on this Nest pension for them. Now, if for any reason you did need to amend this employee's contribution, you can go to manage schemes and edit. And you've got this information down here. So you are able to review um, and edit anything you need to. So maybe for the employee, I needed to change it to a fixed amount of, let's say, £120. I can change that in here. Click OK. And kind of save the record. And when I go back to enter payments, we can see that change is reflected there. And I've got this new employee contribution of £120. So that's overridden that contribution. Um, and for anyone else who's on the same scheme, so employee number two, for example, you can see it doesn't change theirs. It will only change the individuals. Now, if you do need to change that back to the 5%, um, you will have to kind of go and do that manually in the record. So I would just go to the record again. Pensions. Manage schemes and edit. And I would just need to change this back to a percentage in 5%. Again, save the record and we can see that's gone back to what it was before. So a little re recap before we kind of finish things off. So you can view the contributions in enter payments and remember that salary sacrifice schemes will show differently. So they'll show zero for the employee contribution, but you'll have a kind of combined contribution in the employer box. So that will show um, a kind of larger figure than you're expecting. And if you do need to amend the contributions for any reason, you'll do that in the pensions tab manage schemes and edit and you've got the options to kind of review those contributions at the bottom.
But that does bring us to the end of the main webinar content for Pensions the Basics. So before we wrap things up, um, I just want to go through a little bit of further support with you as well. So for webinars, me and Duncan have loads coming up this month, um, including lots more pensions um, webinars on things like the pension assessment, pension calculations, as I mentioned as well. And also, if you are a pensions module user and you send your data via the pensions data exchange or you're looking to kind of set that up, we do have a webinar covering the whole setup process and kind of how to use that as well. We also have the next one of our HR advice webinars coming up in early November with advice from our experts from Advisor Plus. So you can head to sage.co.uk forward slash webinars or we've got the two clickable buttons there on the handout to read more about them and yeah hopefully we'll see you all there something else to be aware of as well is our one-to-one -one bespoke training options so this will be amazing if you're you know in general new to payroll or you're just starting out with sage 50 payroll um, great to kind of you know get a bit more information about them so it'll include training bundles on a variety of topics and if that is something that you're interested in, you can either head to the link on the handout or let us know um, and we'll make sure we, you kind of get to the right person. You can also email us at ukisageuniversity at sage.com for a personalised quote. sage.co.uk forward slash help as well. This is our help centre. If you've not used this before, I would highly recommend uh, having a little look at it. It's a really handy resource. Um, you can search the knowledge base for support guides, demonstration videos. You can access a whole section on just webinars and review all of the previous recordings and things as well. And if you do need to get in touch for any reason, you do have the contact options to get in touch with us as well. And lastly, Sage University, so sageu.com, you can set up a free account here. You can access e-learning, bite-sized learning, as well as kind of um, earning product certification as well. So it's a great way to expand your knowledge on Sage 50 payroll or other Sage products as well. There's a whole variety on there. But I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for your time this afternoon. If you do have any last minute questions there, make sure you get those into the questions panel and we will try to answer all of those by the end of the session. If you are leaving us now, remember as well, you can download the handouts. So that will include all of the slides from the webinar and feel free to copy any of those questions or answers. If you found any of them um, particularly helpful, um, you can keep those for future reference as well. And last thing from me, there is also going to be a short survey that you'll get as you exit the webinar. If you have got just a moment to fill that out, uh, me and Duncan would really, really appreciate that. We do read all of the feedback and take that on board for future sessions. But that is it for the webinar today. I am going to go on mute for a few moments just to help Duncan with those last remaining questions coming through. Um, so I will be back in a few moments to say goodbye. Hello everyone, that's just me back again. Uh, it looks like Duncan's managed to answer all of those questions. So massive thank you to him um, for helping me out for, the, for today's session. And yeah, for the rest of you, um, keep an eye on your emails for a recording of the webinar coming through. You can watch that as many times as you need to. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully we'll see you on another webinar very soon. So on behalf of me and Duncan, we'll see you next time. It's goodbye for now.